Welcome to Hope Today. We are so glad that you have tuned in today and I am excited because you know every time we come together, the Bible says where two or more are gathered, there's no time or space in the anointing. The Bible says he would be here in the midst and because we're all here together, God is in our midst. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert alongside Amanda Brocker. So good to be with you again. That's right. Here we go. We have a great program in store for you. We have Mark D. Conklin that has an amazing project that he has completed. And we're going to dive into the book of Mark. The book of How Mark. How about that? And it's just not Mark's opinions. It's actually like digging in to God's word. We love to do that here at Cornerstone. We do, we do. You know, I was thinking about back in the day. Some of y'all might remember this. Back in the day when uh, Al Green, Pastor Al Green actually, uh, gave his life to the Lord. He came out with this album. It's really good, actually. He talks about some of the stories that he's had and uh, some of the songs, and it's just really good. You know, Al Green can sing. Yes, I mean, he can sing, sister. Amen. There's in between. There's singing, then there's singing. And so it was really, really good. And so today we're going to have Mark, which is going to be really cool. That's and then sweet. something new, y'all, that to me, to me at least, I haven't been on the episode with this called Christian Conversation Starters. So we're going to be asking each other some questions we're about movies. our walk. <laughs> yeah, we are, but it's going to be fun because I'm going to right. answer questions hot off the wire mm -hmm. to kind of see kind of about our faith and where we're going. So you want to stick mm -hmm. around to the end of that. That's going to be some really good conversation. You're a talker, I'm a talker, That's and the right. Holy Ghost is here. It's going to be all good. Here we go. We're ready and we're going to dive deep into God's Word. I'm just so excited. You know, he is musically inclined as well. So in this hour production that they did, it's intertwined with music. And he's wow. going to talk about this. And he had many wonderful guests that we're going to get to hear about. So, well, without any further ado, oh, here further we go. Ado. We're jumping right in. Our next guest is a talented music executive, recording artist, songwriter, and producer. His music has appeared on billboards, country, bluegrass, blues, and so much more, as well as on hit TV shows such as Grey's Anatomy. Mark D. Conklin recently released a new project called The Gospel According to Mark. And he joins us now to share more about this incredible new album and the powerful meaning behind it. Mark, it's great to have you with us on Hope Today. Thank you guys for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. All right, well, you gotta paint the picture of what this production looks like and who all was involved. Well, there's a lot of people involved. Uh, it was, a, you know, I had been in secular music for a long time, and I felt like uh, God had put a calling on me to do something more, to help build the kingdom. So I knew I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what, what I wanted to do. And then one day I just prayed to God. I said, uh, God, what do you want me to write about? And I heard the gospel according to Mark. And I thought, well, that's funny because, you know, that's my name. Um, and I was named after the gospel writer, so that was even even better. But uh, then I started, the more I thought about it and reflected on it, I said, wait a minute, what if we actually did tell the story of Mark's gospel, but did it through song? The thing was that I think if, if we had written songs that just literally told the story, it would have gotten really cumbersome and pretty heavy and bulky. So I thought, well, let's do it with narration. Let's actually use the scripture, have it read so people can hear the stories, and then have the songs act as sort of commentary or reflection on that on that particular passage, and I needed a narrator. And one day, I was editing a podcast. Uh, I, had inter I was the um, interviewer for the Grammy Museum Experience at Prudential Center in Newark for a number of years, and I did an interview with Gloria Gaynor. And when I was editing the podcast, I heard her voice, and I said, wait a minute, that's the voice. That's the voice I should have on this. And she was an inspiration for me to do this album as well after I interviewed her. So I reached out. Amazingly, she said yes, and uh, she's the narrator. So when you when you hear the project, you hear 12 narrations and 12 songs, and you'll hear Gloria's great voice that you know, of course, from I Will Survive and all kinds of hits. Um, she's the narrator on it, and then all kinds of special guests. I think there's something like 13 Grammy Award winners and multiple Dove Award winners uh, on it as well. So, so that's how it sort of took place. It was an inspiration, a prayer, and then a prayer answered when, when Gloria said yes. That is amazing. Can you talk to us a little bit about your own, you know, the gospel of Mark? It's the gospel being preached. I mean, he has the most miracles recorded in that gospel among all four. And he's really trying to capture the heart of that Roman 
empire that was there. But when you studied this out for yourself, what in, you know, what takeaway do you have from the book of Mark? Well, it was interesting. Um, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I didn't realize until I started studying it that there was no nativity scene. I was like, how did I not realize there's no, no birth scene here in this gospel? And actually, I was happy about it because I thought, well, this is great. I don't have to write a Christmas song because that's the last thing I wanted to do for this. Um, it wouldn't have really fit that. So uh, the thing that struck me most about it was the brevity of it. Uh, you know, how, how quickly he gets through stories and the amount of times he uses the word immediately yes. that to express mm -hmm. this, 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 you know, when Jesus, for example, calls his disciples and he says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. Yeah. That was actually the first song on the album that I wrote. It's now it's the third song on the album, but the first one that I wrote is called the calling. And it was because I felt I was being called to do something. And I know a lot of times in life, I feel like I've been called and I just go, well, not now, not now, you know, but I heard someone say recently, God doesn't pocket dial. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, when you hear the call and you have to respond to it. Yeah, so this was, good. I'm glad to say this is one of those moments where I feel like I was being called and it may have taken me a minute or two, but I, I finally pushed through. But that, I think for me, the gospel, the big takeaway was the, the sense of its immediacy um, that he, he implies throughout. And I think that's in everything that we do, and, it's, and especially in our response to Jesus and the calling on our lives. That's right. It's so true. And just thinking about that, that word immediately, and that Mark was writing for the Roman audience, and they were people, all roads lead to Rome. It was our first roadway system. They were people of action. And he's portraying this picture of Jesus is a man of action immediately, immediately. And it was all because he wanted them to receive salvation. Can you tell me a little bit about what your salvation experience looks like? Yeah, for me, I grew up in the church, and then, like a lot of people, around the time of 18 or so, I fell away. Um, and I wouldn't say I was ever an atheist. I was probably more an agnostic or, you know, maybe a seeker. You know, I kind of looked at everything. And it wasn't until my early 40s uh, that I had an experience that uh, there was a, a woman that I was friends with who was a backup singer that I'd used on some projects and, um, and some studio and live projects. And she'd been very uh, sick. And um, she, she had some major health concern. And I called her one day just to check on her. And she said, Mark, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer, right? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I hadn't been going to church. I hadn't been praying through all this. I've just been so stressed out. And she said, I started going again. And I started praying again. And it's gone. And I said, what? And she said, it's gone. The doctor can't figure out it's a miracle. Mm. And I said, this is unbelievable. And I remember I went to work that day and I talked to my assistant. And I told her the story that I just had this phone conversation on my drive in. And I just said, you know what? I think I need to go to church. And she was stunned. She said, really? And I said, yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I don't have anything that I'm praying. There's nothing, there was nothing I thought that I needed. Mm -hmm. But something about that was just calling me to it. And, and that weekend, I was in a church on my knees and th praying for forgiveness for 20-some-odd years of all kinds of things. And, uh, and I was home. And I haven't looked back since. So it, it, it's... And looking back, there was other little moments of being called uh, as well that I just didn't realize. It's only in hindsight that sometimes I think you see where the hand of God was reaching out to you and the Holy Spirit was touching you. Um, so I did see like a trail of that, but that, that was it. And once I returned, I knew I wanted to do something musically. I figured, you know, use your time, talent, and treasure. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't know what, how to use my talent in its best way. And it wasn't until this when I realized, okay, here's a vehicle where I, I can actually use what I think I do the best and be able to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's why using it in this way that people hopefully will be able to experience the gospel stories that maybe they've heard a hundred times in a different way, or maybe they've never heard it at all. And this is a way for them to sort of uh, ease into it and then explore uh, afterwards. I was just thinking about, you know, one of the songs, I know anything I work on, there's always something that just means so much to me. Is there one of the songs that God really inspired you that this is like your favorite of that project? Yeah, yeah for a couple of reasons. There's a song called Take This Cup, which is the 10th song on the album, and it is from the Garden of Gethsemane. So it's mm -hmm. Jesus you know, saying, if, if you want, you can take this cup, but your, not my will, your will be done. 
and it was the literally the last song that I wrote for the project. I had to replace something else that just wasn't quite working. So I had to kind of a, throw it up there and see how it would work. Wrote it fairly quickly. And I realized as soon as I did it, I said, oh, there's something special about this because it felt so honest and real. And then I had a chance to record with a, a legendary uh, black gospel quartet called the Fairfield Four, who as a quartet, they've been around for, I think, 100 years. But um, and these gentlemen are the latest iteration. And being in the studio with them, literally getting a chance to stand there with those men and sing that song, it's something I'll never, ever forget. Uh, so it's just one of those records where it, it came out exactly right, exactly how I had it in my head, and then have their voices on it, you know, took it to an entirely different level. So for me, that one is probably the one that, that stands out the most. But there are many, but that's can, probably that reason for that Can you give us a little taste of one of the verses or the chorus of it? Like, what is being spoken? Uh, so again, what we tried to do, what I tried to do, and then when I did, I did write this one by myself, but um, what we tried to do is sort of see it through the eyes of the per people who were there, but also experience it now. And when I wrote this, it was literally during COVID when so many people were, were dying, even people I knew um, or their family members, it was just so much of that, um, that that was sort of what I was thinking about when I wrote it. And so it's, Father, I give you my pain, I give you my suffering. You can do with me what you want. You know, like it's those, those types of, um, those, that was the message that I was trying to get. Um, Father, not my will, your will be done. You know, it's, those are the lines that were really, it was, I, I know I'm ha I know we're all dealing with this. We're all suffering right now. And I know you can take it away, but either way, I'm going to be faithful. And I think that for me is the greatest Christian prayer. I think Jesus taught us the greatest prayer is to even in the midst of the suffering and the pain and the fear and the doubt to still say, I believe and whatever you will for me, I will do it. I, that to me is the ultimate Christian prayer, and that's what I was trying to get across in that song. So powerful, and I do believe the call of God was on you to do this, but I believe as we listen and take in this beautiful project that you've done, I believe people are going to be stirred and feel called themselves. So what would you say to that one? You know, they're hearing this, they're wondering, I need to get this, I need to hear it, but what would you say to that individual that's going through a tough season? You know, it's one of the funny things. I did a show the other night uh, in Bethlehem, actually, I was down in Pennsylvania, and um, I did the song number 11, which is the, um, uh, the crucifixion song. It's called Oh Lonely Day. And I have two great singers on it, um, legendary uh, voices, Grammy Award winners, Rhonda Vincent and John Barry are on that song. And what I said to the audience that night was that I can't explain suffering. It's the biggest barrier to most people as to for believing. They can't understand why, a, a, how could there be a just God who could allow this? But I think the greatest thing about our faith is that we have a God who not only understands that we suffer, but he himself lowered himself to take human form and suffer the ultimate pain on the cross so that we could have life. And to me, Again, it doesn't explain why we have to suffer, but it does tell me that I have a God who understands and loves me. So I, I, I said to them, and I'd say to anyone listening, that if you are suffering through anything right now, just know that there is a Savior who, who does understand it and who does love you. And that in and of itself can make the gap and, and bridge that gap to get to the next side and, and to believe. And then once you do, just get in the Word and start listening. Amen. That is such a powerful word, and it's the truth of God's word. We come as we are. Well, can you tell us, for those that are interested in this project, how do they find it? The easiest way is if you go to markgospel.com. It's easy to remember, markgospel.com. From there, you can find streaming links. You can watch behind-the-scenes videos. You can watch lyric videos. You can even click on any of the icons for Facebook or Instagram and come say hello and uh, visit me there. But that's the best way, markgospel.com. And if you still like physical CDs, they are available for sale <laughs> on the site. So, you know, or T-shirts, anything you like to support the, uh, the work that we're doing. We appreciate it. But just listen to the music, whichever way you can. Come on, listen to the music and maybe send a note and say hello. That's awesome. Do you travel and like perform? Like, can people book you to have you at their church? 
Yes, it's funny. I had not been until just now. Like that's just started, and I'm really gearing that up over the next few months. So absolutely, um, through the contact form on the website. Again, you can go to markgospel.com. That's exactly what I wanted to do, and I've I've written a devotional that accompanies the um, the album that we're putting together, and I'll be able to bring that out. And so hopefully, people will be able to you know get that at the shows and, and enjoy that as well. And, and I've had several requests from some churches that want to use it as a study guide, um, which I think is amazing. I, that's not something I ever thought would happen in my life. But uh, if that is, if that's, again, if that's God's will, well, let it be done. I'm, I'm great with it. Amen. Well, we sure do thank you. We love your heart. And to just get people closer to our Heavenly Father, it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, before we head to break, check out some of Mark's new music. Here is a snippet from one of the tracks off his new album. It's called The Greatest is Love. You ain't got love. You ain't got love. The greatest is love. The greatest is love. Love, love. The greatest is love. The barriers that stand between you and a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains that Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. Well, I'm so excited, ladies and gentlemen, because we have something new to us called introing Christian conversations. I mean, this is going to be really, really cool. That's so right. basically, I'm going to be able to ask you some questions. You're going to ask me mm -hmm. some questions, and we're just going to talk hot off the wire. So... That's what do you right. say we get started? That's right. And you all may have to get your own set of these questions, you know, and <laughs> sit around your table. All right. Question number one. Think of a difficult time in your life. Did you feel closer to or further away from God? And why might that be? You know, I would probably say both. Um, I probably One of the most difficult times in my life was when my mother had cancer. And, uh, and I got the diagnosis back in 2015 and she was battling. I'll never forget through the pain and the trauma of everything that was going on. Um, all of a sudden I saw her one day, I was passing her down the street and my dad had a wheelchair van at that time. Mm -hmm. And I saw her and my heart broke and I began to get angry uh, because I'm serving God, I'm living right, I'm doing all these things and all this stuff bad is happening. And not only that, I'm praying for people, Amanda, and they're getting healed. People are getting healed and delivered. There was a kid that was in our church that had autism and had never spoken in full sentences. Laid hands on him, bam, start speaking in full sentences. I mean, I've seen all this happen, but at the same time, as the ministry was growing, my mother's deteriorating. And I'm thinking, what type of reward is that, that God would give that to me? So I started getting bitter. And um, all of a sudden, in the middle of that, the Lord arrested my heart. And it's not even scripture per se that got it. I mean, there are scriptures behind it, yeah. but he told me, he said, I want you to think praise mm -hmm. about me all the time. You know, the Bible talks about how his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Mm -hmm. I will bless the Lord at all times. And I had to learn how in that moment to praise God because the Bible says that he inhabits right. the praises of his people. So at that time, I felt very distant, but at the same token, it may seem something small to you, but when he mm -hmm. spoke at it, he just said, Jay, think praise because I'm good all the time, That's even right. if your situation isn't yes. good. And so there was a time in my life where I felt both of those. Amen. That's what I was struggling with. Amen. So. Our perspective of God is so important. It is. It is. And I want to get your perspective. All right, here on, we go. Let's see what we got. It's <laughs> kind of like I'm playing poker here. What do you value most in life? 
does the way you spend your time reflect this? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I feel challenged, you know, with this question. I would love to say that um, I am eight hours a day, you know, at my bedside on my knees praying and, you know, that it would reflect that my greatest pursuit in life would be Christ but I'd be lying. <laughs> so I think, you know, family is really important to me. God is, and I believe that, you know, this is an area in our own lives that, you know, when kids gone wayward or whatnot, that you really uh, come back and look at. And I think it was an area in my life that uh, needed some correction because God places your family there. And it's really important that you keep them as your ministry. Amen. You know, they are Amen. your ministry. Yeah. This is who God blessed you with. And uh, so I would, you know, family, the Lord is definitely, and everything that we do is because of him. And I talk to the Lord all the time. I do it even when I'm alone and it looks really weird sometimes. <laughs> but he's my, my BFF. Like he's Amen. just there with me and present. So yeah, I would hope that it would be God and then my family. And, you know, we have more family time sitting around the table playing games. Pull a game like this out and do it with your family. That just giving your attention to them. I've seen with my kids, even in their adulthood, how much they appreciate quality time. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Well, you know, I think it's really, I saw a thing one time. It had a, um, a heart and mm -hmm. it was talking about how to make God number one. And a lot of times we have a heart there. I'll kind of, I think I did it right yeah. <laughs> like that. And you have a bright, you have God here, family here, all these things in your heart. Yeah. And a guy actually did it a different way. He had this here and had God in the whole heart mm -hmm. and everything else around it. Around and it. so if we have him in the center That's of right. everything, we can Amen. never fail. Amen. Good word. All right, here we go. Question number two for Jay. Do you think that God speaks to us today? And if so, how? Wow, you know, there's some people that don't believe that. Some people believe that, you know, all type of prophecy and all this stuff is only in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I am one of those people that believe that God still speaks to us. Now, I've never had the audible voice thing, have you? I have. You have had the audible voice? Yes, I okay. heard the Lord speak to me, and it was about reading 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, which brought that deliverance. That yes. yes. So That's I will right. never forget it. That was a moment that I had, and I can't even say I fully understand how does that happen. Uh -huh. But I just know that God's desire for us is so pure, and He is always pursuing us. Yes. He is coming after us in every means, and it's our time to surrender. You know, people need to surrender to God. Amen. I remember that conversation that we actually had sitting right here right. and how God spoke to you. And I do believe that God does speak to us still. Um, I believe there's many different ways. I, if you can hear the Spirit of the Lord, you can hear God in a stop sign. You can hear him through your children. You can hear him through your dog. If God speak through with Balaam and Balak with the donkey yeah. because he was kicking him and trying to get him a prod and the donkey spoke to him, God can use anything. The Bible says, he that hath an ear. So God's yes. got to be speaking. That's right. Or he wouldn't have said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. So mm -hmm. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. So I have an example of this that I just yes. have to share real quick. Sure. Uh, our son, you know, before he really went wayward, he went out and did street outreach with me. And he was like 14 and a half at the time. And the little lady that was sleeping in uh, Sally's Beauty Supply, there's like some little steps where her, that used to be downtown on like Smithfield. She came out from them steps and for minutes told him, you need to listen to your mother. You mm. look at my situation. I didn't listen. And wow. I thought, oh my gosh, lady, he's never going to come out here with me again, you know. But really afterthought is like God was even talking to my son yeah. through those he went to serve. Wow. So we should wow. always be just open to listening. Well, you know, I also think that a lot of times um, it's hard when your parents or when you're like, it can be a spouse because mm -hmm. we're so familiar with them. And if we're not careful, we can, they can be speaking from God, but we're so familiar with them that we can't we hear God. We yeah. disregard, but it's the same Lord, yes. just they can't hear it and sometimes they need another voice. Amen. So let me, let me get you, you got one okay. more here that we All got right. to do. Let's see here. What is your belief about how the world came into being? 
I believe in creation. I believe in Genesis and we have an amazing program on our Cornerstone Network called Origins that I can plug because they bring creationists on and they help you see the Bible through God's lens. You know, if we already have preconceived ideas, then we're looking through that lens. And our family had this amazing opportunity recently to visit the Ark Encounter and the wow. Creation Museum in Kentucky, which I watched Origins specials that we recorded there and I always wanted to go so I was like yes this was our year we got to go and I will say you will walk away knowing that the God you believe in wow. is real he created everything with his breath he did it for real in six days God he is God and Amen. we can trust him he's full proof and just seeing the ark and the the how big it was and how they organized everything. And that there was a, you know, instructions from the Lord in the Bible on how to build it so that it didn't tip, you know, cause that would have been a lot of casualties. And I was amazed and just in awe of our God and how much he loves us. And at the end, they're like, Jesus is the ark. Find yourself in Jesus Come because on, there is a return coming. This Amen. world is fire next time. It's going to be gone. There's going to be new heaven and a new earth. And we want to make sure that you and those that you love are in the ark of Christ. Amen. Why don't you take a quick 30 seconds, lead somebody Amen. to Jesus. Thank you're right you, there. Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if you right now are hearing what I'm saying and you're thinking Jesus is the ark. Well, if you remember in Noah's days, it was as it is today in our world and the Lord sent the rains and that flood happened. They were in that boat for 150 days. Well, actually 351, but it rained. The, it, it's amazing what he did. But Jesus being sent God in his great mercy to save all of mankind because the ark, yes, it saved Noah and his family, but then we repopulated the earth and here we are and we're broken and we need a savior. And he sent Jesus. And if you will receive him today, just open your heart, ask him to come in, ask him to be the Lord of your life. And if you make that decision, I ask that you would call our 888-665-4483 number because we desire to pray with you. We wanna get materials to you to help you grow with God, a relationship relationship with Jesus is necessary and we want you to have that today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, pray for our nation. Prophetic revivalist and healing minister Dr. Candace Smithyman invites us to pray for America on Yom Kippur along with a million men and women in Washington, D.C. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.